All right, so let's put the dictionaries from the previous lecture to some good use. Uh, and uh, here is an uh, exercise uh, that I like to use as an example. So here in, in Python, so uh, this uh, early in the course we get to already do interesting this kind of poor man's uh, linguistics. So I uh, read uh, through the source text. Uh, so we're, we're going to be using the war and peace uh, uh, from Project Gutenberg uh, as an example file. So let's uh, create the dictionary of all the words uh, that we find in what we read and uh, the dictionary keeps it account for each word associates the integer count how many times uh, the word has been seen then we can find the most uh, frequent words and uh, we can look for a singleton words uh, words that occur only once uh, in the text so the word count example uh, uh, let's uh, read it through here from the uh, from the repo uh, so uh, regular expressions, regular, regular expressions, regexes, uh, they are uh, very powerful uh, text-based uh, pattern matching uh, symbolism. So this is uh, part of the 393 Unix course uh, more, but uh, so uh, the regexes, uh, so uh, we get a little bit of a use for them here just to get a taste. And uh, if you learn them, so uh, then uh, they're the same everywhere. Uh, so we learn them once, so they'll always be wherever you go. So regular expressions, they used to say that the man had a problem and they uh, use it the regular expression now they have two problems but uh, but those uh, days are long gone uh, so uh, I don't know like, how an actual computational linguist would uh, do it uh, but uh, I felt like uh, let's uh, break the contractions so uh, here is said uh, uh, first of all so this is now a tuple so uh, an immutable list uh, so we're all using ordinary parentheses uh, parentheses are getting a lot of uh, use in the language so it's amazing that uh, there's never ambiguity what they mean but so, so this one is now uh, creating a tuple and uh, tuples are uh, even though they're immutable so they are heterogeneous so anything lives inside it so uh, can contain further tuples inside it so each one is a tuple is like a, a replacement rule for a, contraction and uh, how we break it down. So I'm sure I forgot some, but uh, this uh, ought to be enough for war and peace. A tuple uh, of uh, rules, each one is a tuple. So uh, regular expressions, so uh, here uh, to use to uh, identify a word separator and uh, then I must have uh, in an earlier version used a more complicated rule because I for some reason uh, well felt the need to include a explanation but so here this just means uh, any number uh, of anything that is not a, a lowercase uh, character we're just gonna convert all the characters to lowercase anyway so uh, so use uh, uh, non lowercase character that is um, uh, probably doing something wrong but that uh, wouldn't be the first uh, okay so uh, uh, let's keep track of the words that we have seen so we uh, what have we seen initially nothing so are the dictionary that contains all the words uh, that we have seen so far is initially empty so now it's gonna grow by every time we see a new word and uh, now reading through a text file in python so uh, this is the first time uh, that we are doing it here so uh, the function open so this one uh, is used to open a file so we say that the uh, unique or text uh, so the utf8 uh, pretty much is, is the standard these days but uh, well just to be safe uh, well uh, bytes don't themselves don't mean anything so we, bytes uh, can be anything and they uh, the semantic is whatever we we say so uh, so uh, i like to use the war and peace as an example so uh, taken from project Gutenberg. so uh, all my automated testers that when they need a text uh, source so the uh, so uh, let's put uh, something from the past to very unexpected use so uh, so uh, uh, when you open through a file so it, it becomes a, a sequence a lazy sequence that uh, produces its uh, characters and lines one at a time so so let's uh, loop through these uh, individual lines so uh, looping through so each line in the file so notice how pretty this is like we retreat the file so where uh, somehow it just magically opens behind the scenes and there uh, in the python it just shows up as a lazy sequence that we can iterate through and uh, then uh, we skip the empty lines so every line has at least uh, the line break character inside it uh, continue so this one is an interesting statement uh, so uh, not uh, not uh, the purists don't like it and i don't like it uh, but sometimes it's just uh, uh, it's just uh, showing laziness. Uh, continue is a bit misnamed for technical reasons. If it was named uh, skip, 
or next, uh, then it would be like, uh, go to the immediately to the next uh, round, uh, skip the rest of the body, so the processing of the current uh, customer at the service windows, then okay, next. So then uh, the next one uh, gets the service right away, we finished uh, serving you here, sir. Okay, so uh, we skip the empty lines, go to the next uh, round of the, and uh, then, uh, so notice uh, the string methods, because strings are immutable, like the method to convert to lowercase, it doesn't modify the original string because uh, no, no, they are totally frozen solid. Uh, they made so that uh, you cannot change them uh, unless doing very underhanded things. But uh, then, uh, so therefore, we can uh, say that uh, the lowercase version is now the new line. So then the old line object, because it no longer has a name, it's just gonna be garbage collected. Uh, the bytes are gonna be put to the uh, good use in the future. It's the circle of life inside the computer. So convert the current line to the lowercase and then so extract the line break if it is the last character. Notice the escape sequence that this is the line break character that is the stand. There's actually three different line breaks but I'm just assuming the Unix style files here. So extract uh, all the characters except the last one. So uh, from the beginning up to and excluding the last one. So remember the behavior of the negative uh, indices in slicing. So then uh, this replaces the, the current line. And uh, then notice we can, uh, we have where outer loop is uh, looping through each line. And then for each line we have an inner loop. So this body of a loop can be arbitrary long and contain a still loop inside it, like a wheels uh, inside wheels. So then there's no limit to how many le levels of wheels you have, but uh, it's just uh, every level of wheels uh, uh, slows down to execution generally by order of magnitude. So the fewer levels, uh, the less of a slimier you are, so to speak. So we're looping through the elements, notice that uh, we know that each element in this tuple is, uh, is itself a tuple. So then uh, we just immediately take the tuple that we get and we break it into the two components, original and the replacement. So uh, this, uh, if this element were coming here were something else than the two element tuple, so then uh, that would uh, break down. But we, we made this list, uh, we know its content, so we know it's fine. And then uh, so we we'll make a replacement, so the strings have a replacement or that uh, does exactly what the doctor ordered. So uh, the, like this is the, for all these data types, uh, like some things are just so common that like you just know that there has to be, that uh, somebody must have, that if it's not there in, in the object itself, uh, like uh, this kind of method, uh, uh, like the, uh, it would be like a very surprising that uh, either it's there or, or we can easily get it from Stack Overflow because thousands before us must have had a had the same need. And uh, then, uh, so the re regular expressions, notice the replace between <coughs> difference between replace and sub. So this one uh, is a literal replacement, but this one makes the regular expression substitution. So the regular expression here, that uh, they're usually they're given as a raw string set uh, that uh, we don't need to worry about the ball. Uh, uh, slashing and such. So then, uh, so uh, any uh, we extract any uh, this possessive s uh, that comes uh, followed by a word boundary. So this is a special regex symbol. Uh, the invisible space. Notice your cursor lives uh, between the invisible space. There, well, it would be a text file. So you would see this. They say here's the cursor living here. Look at me. So then. Uh, the, the word boundary, the invisible space between uh, uh, white space and non-white space character. And then the second uh, contraction, uh, uh, the LL, uh, we replace uh, as if it were, were a will. And uh, the, uh, the way uh, to break uh, a line uh, into the individual words. So you, the, if you have uh, like a line contest a sentence, so then you get a sequence of the individual words in there. So uh, you, uh, this is done in a bit, bit of a backhanded fashion that uh, you define uh, the space uh, between uh, the words. You don't define a word, but you define what is not a word. So then uh, when you know that, so then uh, the, the, the rest is then the word. So this is a kind of, kind of, kind of thing here, but uh, 
but more on that there. So then uh, they split the into the sequence of words, and then uh, if it's a non, if it's a, somehow this could produce empty words, I forgot that uh, maybe I did something wrong originally. And one never hurts to be extra safe. So even if this is always true, so this doesn't cause us anything. So then uh, uh, in the dictionary, the number of uh, currencies is the previous number of uh, currencies. Notice we can uh, use the get method because if you try to use the square bracket, so this would crash the first time uh, because uh, the word is empty. There. So I uh, get the uh, number of uh, currencies and if it's not there, so then uh, we pretend that it was zero times and then uh, now it has been there at the previous number of times uh, plus one. So uh, after that uh, the dictionary is going to contain uh, every word that we encounter anywhere and uh, then each word is associated with the integer count how many times we have seen it. So we're uh, running this example, so we're uh, looping through the uh, some test values. Uh, so uh, lo let's uh, look at the output. So uh, the Prince uh, is this many times and uh, Russia that many times and you is uh, Annie. And this uh, uh, now of course uh, isn't in that particular particular tone. And uh, then uh, reading through the rest of the code. Let's uh, create the list of the counts and uh, the words. So uh, now uh, we have a list, uh, we extract the information from the dictionary so that uh, for every word and the associated count uh, we put in the list uh, the count uh, and then the word first. Uh, then we put the count first because we're gonna be using it as the first uh, the primary sorting criteria. So uh, then uh, we have a list of every word associated with the count and uh, then uh, this list at this point because whichever way the hash table has internally has this uh, dictionary value so you get uh, all your elements in uh, what is seemingly a, a random order. But uh, the, now that we sort this list. So now when you're sorting a list of tuples, uh, tuple comparison is uh, the word of the five dollar word of the day lexicographic. So meaning that uh, the first uh, compare the first elements and uh, then uh, if they are different, so then uh, that uh, comparison makes the difference for the whole tuple regardless of the rest of the elements. So like in a dictionary, if the which word comes before the other one, so all you need to do is look at the first letter and you know which word is before the other one in the dictionary. So the primary criteria decides and only if the primary criteria are equal, look at the secondary criteria. So then we sort with respect to the words. These words we know to be distinct, so we don't need a third criteria. So we get a sorted list of words. Uh, normally in sorting, in computer science by the way, so there's a convention that the sorting always means sort in ascending order, the smallest beginning and uh, the largest in the end. So at uh, the sorting uh, we can uh, say with this optional parameter reverse uh, equals true uh, that uh, sort in descending order. So that we get the largest occurrence count first and uh, then uh, the, the lowest uh, counts in the end. And uh, then, so we take this uh, sorted uh, word list with the, uh, this, with the count and the word and uh, notice that if you have a list uh, whose elements are tuples, so this is like uh, some kind of a projection operation that uh, you take uh, the tuple and uh, just uh, extract uh, one particular component uh, to the list uh, that you are building up. So we just extract the words, but uh, this uh, list comprehension guaranteed to produce the words in the exact same order that they were in the sorted word list, so we are perfectly happy with that. So then uh, let's extract uh, slice out uh, the first uh, 300 elements uh, separately. So uh, the, the, the most uh, 300 uh, frequent words uh, uh, are not uh, surprising at all, of course. Uh, so the first uh, non-trivial words, so there's a peer in there. So I haven't read the book, but uh, peer is presumably a main character. And uh, uh, this uh, word uh, fixed the genre of the book uh, pretty clearly. And uh, I guess Natasha is the love interest, Andrew. And okay, there's the three. Uh, okay, I, whatever is the plot, I haven't read the book. I just know that the book is famous for being very long, so uh, it looked like it was out of copyright. So. So let's put the book uh, to a very unexpected use to echo in the future. Then uh, we find uh, 
Uh, here is a uh, handy sequence uh, decorator that we're gonna be encountering this also. So when uh, you take a sequence and uh, the reversed version it, so it's a lazy sequence that uh, is the reverse of the original. So then, uh, uh, well, uh, if the original is eager, so uh, well, reversed can whatever it does. So then uh, forcing back to the uh, eager. As a fully created sequence, so to turn back to a list. So, uh, so uh, here is now, notice the list comprehension used for filtering. You uh, used for filtering, so if uh, the words uh, uh, is uh, exactly the count is one, so the singleton words, uh, let's find out the singleton words uh, to conclude this uh, video. Uh, abagus, abandos, a basement, abbreviation, abri, ab, so there's uh, words. Uh, Words that are, but there's a surprising large number of them. So, uh, they like uh, everything, so uh, the language follows some kind of a zip's uh, law. Uh, so, again, so some uh, computational linguists uh, probably could uh, explain this kind of stuff uh, much better.